Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Zach, aka Crochet Me Zeddy, and I am a crochet pattern designer, I'm a good me artist, plushie maker, you name it, I probably do it. In today's video we're going to be doing a step-by-step -step instructional process of how to create this little cutie here so you can have one for yourself. Before we get started there's a few things that we need to know. I'll be using US terminology in this pattern. I'll be using these terms specifically. If you don't know how to do these specific crochet techniques you will need to know them before we get started as I won't be teaching them throughout the pattern. I will also be working in a continuous spiral. I do not join in the seam as some amigurumi patterns do. I just go in a constant spiral round and round and round. The instructions that come up on the screen, I will give you a quick brief on how to follow my instructions here. So these pattern notes will be appearing throughout the tutorial just to give you a visual guide on how to do the pattern as well. So the materials that I use for this pattern can be manipulated for different sizes. You'll just need to use a different crochet hook size, different safety eye sizes, just to match that different yarn that you're using. I will be going through the materials very shortly, but I will also have them linked below in the description. Also feel free to sell anything that you make from this pattern. Just don't redistribute the pattern in any other format. Uh, feel free to share this video to any friends or family who are wanting to make a little cute bat plushie. And you will be able to purchase the text PDF version from my website if you prefer a PDF version. Last but not least, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you like the content that I am putting out there, any engagement is really, really, really appreciated. It really helps support me as a crochet content creator, and the more engagement I have means I can actually be putting out more quality videos. So thank you so much for those who already have been subscribing, liking, commenting, all that jazz. I really, really appreciate it. Anyway, let's get started with the video. As for materials, you're gonna need a few things. You're gonna need a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. You're gonna need some polyfill for stuffing, some scissors, some 15 millimeter crochet safety eyes, uh, a darning needle for sewing the pieces together later. I use a bent tip uh, darning needle, but you can just use a straight tip one as well. I just find this really good for sewing pieces together. You'll need some stitch markers. Uh, you can use the regular ones. I just prefer to use bobby pins. It's what I have always used throughout my crochet career and it's what I will continue to use. And then you're gonna need some pins uh, for piecing the amigurumi together. Um, this is my first ever creation, Mrs. Prickles. So thanks for coming along, Mrs. Prickles, for this tutorial. And then last but not least, you're gonna need to pick two different uh, colors of yarn. Uh, I am using this this bright blue color here as well as this lavender. Uh, I wanted to make like a Zubat themed bat for this tutorial. Um, the colorways are 91 and 63. They don't actually put what colors they are from Hobie um, on these labels which is kind of annoying uh, but I will put them up on the screen for you guys before we get into this tutorial. Cool, let's get started. We are going to start with the head of the bat, so you want to grab your main colour yarn and you're just going to start off with a magic circle and six single crochets. Now I'm going to show you how I do my magic circles, I've shown this off before in my tips and tricks uh, for plush yarn video, but I'll just show you again very quickly now. So what you want to do is you just make a P shape on your hand and you just lock that in with your thumb and your index finger, wrap the yarn around and lock it in with your pinky finger there, and then you just put your uh, hook through, yarn over once, yarn over and pull through a second time and then you have a loop down here. What you want to do is you just put your hook through there, yarn over, pull up and then yarn over and pull through too and that will be working as your first single crochet. Now what you want to do is you grab your magic circle and you put it over your hook and then you just pull it tight. This just avoids um, any difficulties with pulling that magic circle tight later on. I always just pull it tight after that first stitch. Now the second loop that is on your hook, that is your magic circle, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working into that, as well as have uh, this yarn just cast over the tail of the magic circle, because um, you just want to capture that in every stitch that you're doing. So I'm going to yarn over, pull through, so that's my second single crochet. And then I'm just going to go for another four to have that total of six single crochets. One, five, and 
six. Perfect. So now in this next round, we're going to do an increasing round where we're going to increase into every stitch and have a total of six increases, which means 12 stitches. Um, I actually had to refilm this part because I lost the footage, funnily enough. So we're going to cut back, change the lighting and carry on with the video. So round two, we're going to increase into every single single crochet from the round before. I don't actually use my stitch marker on my first two rounds, um, just because I can still count to 12 as I go around. Um, but once I get past round two, that's when I'll use my stitch marker to keep track. Let's just double check that. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Perfect. Now for round 3, we're going to do a round of single crochets and then increases. So we'll do 6 repetitions of a single crochet and then an increase. So, single crochet, increase. Single crochet, now in that last stitch, do our last increase. I'm just going to stretch out that little magic circle there just to avoid any coning on the top. Just pull it that's a little bit tighter. Cool. Put back in my stitch marker. Now for round four, we're going to do a round of two single crochets increase. Now for this next round, we're going to be doing three single crochets increase. So for the next few rounds, what we're actually going to be doing is continuing on in this even rate of increases around. So with this round, it's three single crochets increase um, all the way around, repeating. And then in the next round, it's gonna be four single crochets increase. And then the round after that is five single crochets increase. Um, which will end with a total of 42 stitches around. So I'm just going to keep going along with that and I will meet you back at the end of round 7 when we have finished that round of 5 single crochets increase. One, two. Awesome. So now that we are at the end of our increasing rounds, what we're going to do is we're just going to continue on around doing six rounds with no increases. So you should have 42 stitches around your piece at the moment. Um, and what you're just going to do, so what you're just going to do is continue on round, 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 all doing single crochets um, for another six rounds. So I'm just going to show you a quick tip as I come to the end of that first uh, single crochet round. So what I do instead of moving my stitch marker with every round, um, now that I've done one round of my single crochets, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my stitch marker from being on that final stitch to actually just being inserted just underneath it. So I can still see that this was my last single crochet here. Um, and what I'm going to do for the next five rounds of single crochet is I'm just going to keep going round and round and round rather than moving my, my stitch marker with me every single time. I'm going to keep going round until I can actually just count how many rows up that I need to have before I need to start um, decreasing. So I'll just continue on there and I'll meet you at the end of the six rounds of single crochet around bearing in mind that we have just done one of them. To 
Just to show you what I mean, you can see that my stitch marker is still there and I can count one, two, three rows up from when I started doing my rounds of single crochet. So I'm just gonna continue on for the next three rounds and then we will continue on with the pattern. Alrighty, so we're just coming out to that last single crochet of those six rounds. There you go, so you get one, two, three, four, five, six. Awesome, so now I can move my stitch marker back up to where I want it to be. There we go, so now we've just finished our six rounds of single crochet. You will see here that my piece is starting to cone up a little bit here, which is fine, it's completely normal. Um, I talk about this in my tips and tricks video. So what you can do is you can actually just stretch out that magic circle uh, it will make it less of a cone. If it's still coning, uh, I will fix that. If it's still coning, I can also fix that uh, just a little bit later when we're doing the stuffing of the head. Cool. All right, so the next part is we are going to be doing our decreasing rounds. So much like our increasing rounds, where we go in an even rate of increases each round, we're going to do an even rate of decreases each round. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with five single crochets and then a decrease. And we're gonna repeat that six times around. Do this decrease round a little bit differently. I'm going to show you something that I don't actually mention in the pattern, in the written pattern, but I will mention it here for you guys. And that's how to evenly space out these invisible decreases. So although they're called invisible decreases, um, you can still see that it looks like a little bit of an odd stitch uh, when you're looking at the finished piece. And if you do continuously do them in a rate of like five single crochets decrease and then the next round being four single crochets decrease, you will notice like a little line appearing on the doll. So I'll show you a way of avoiding those uh, invisible decreases being bunched up. Um, which you can then replicate in many other patterns that require you to make a ball shape. So now we should be at a stitch count of 36. So for this round, what you'd normally do would be doing four single crochets decrease, four single crochets decrease, and repeating that around six times. Um, but what that ends up having happen is you'll end up with these kind of like little weird bunched areas It's pretty hard to see but you will see it once it's all bunched together Together and that's when you're actually doing these invisible decreases on top of each other So what we're gonna do is for and you can repeat this for many other patterns as well is that anytime that there is an even amount of Single crochets before a decrease what we're gonna do is we're gonna split that up so rather than doing four single crochets decrease around, we're actually gonna go two single crochets decrease in the first one, and then continue on with four single crochets decrease for the next uh, five repetitions, and then end with those two stitches, or those two single crochets that we um, divided at the start. So we'll go one single crochet, two single crochet, decrease, and now we'll continue on with our regular of four single crochets decrease, four single crochets decrease, and then we'll have those last two stitches uh, just left over. Four. Decrease, and then we'll have those last two stitches there that we uh, took off at the start. So that's one. So now we should have a count of 30 and then what we'll do because it's a odd number decrease round so it's three stitches decrease around we're just going to continue as normal and then for the next round we'll do a two stitches decrease round um, as our final decrease round before we finish off with the head um, but that one we can divide again and we'll do a single stitch a single crochet decrease and then we'll go two single crochets decrease, two single crochets decrease around until we have that one last stitch that we took off at the start.
One, two, what's this stitch marker right there? Decrease. And then our last stitch with our stitch marker in there. Gonna take that out. That's our last single crochet that we took off from the start. Now that's the end of the head. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slip stitch and then I will cut this piece. Uh, I don't need to leave a long tail. Uh, sometimes I do just because when I'm sewing the head to the body, sometimes because of the, just the way that chenille yarn is, it might start fraying. So I normally just leave a long tail anyway just in case I need to use it for sewing the head to the body rather than using the tail from the body piece to the head, which will make sense later. Um, but for now, just leave either a long tail if you want to um, protect yourself from that risk, or you could just leave it as a short tail, which is also fine. Now, what I like to do is I like to actually just add in my safety eyes now. So what I'm going to do is I will grab my safety eyes and we're going to add them between rows and 10 and 11. Uh, what I do is wherever I left that last uh, stitch that where I fastened off, I'll try to put that as the back middle. So I will face my plushie towards me and then I'm gonna find those rows 10 and 11. So that is starting from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So where I said 10, I'm going to put my first safety eye in. I'm just going to put it in there, just place it in there first. And then we're going to do around nine stitches. Um, so you can see where that one stitch was. So I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I'll put the other eye in. So before I clip on any eyes, I always just want to make sure that it looks nice and makes sense. So if I kind of just like puff it out a little bit, I can see what it looks like and that looks great to me. So what I'm going to do is just clip those in, put the backs on now. Perfect. And the other one. Perfect. I'm happy with that. And now we can move on to the body. So now with the body, we're gonna use the same color yarn and we're gonna start with both the legs and then make the rest of the body shape, uh, which will then leave a long tail for sewing to the head. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with leg one, which you start with a magic circle. Once again, just do the magic circle uh, in your own kind of way. This is my way. And do six single crochets into that magic circle. And then what we're gonna do is do a round of increases. And it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my stitch marker and now I'm just going to do three rounds of a single crochet at 12 stitches. Seven. And the last stitch, 12. Just like the body port, uh, just like the head portion, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my stitch marker down here and then continue on for those next two rounds, uh, just so I don't need to keep moving my stitch marker around. Cool, and just as you come up to that last one, there you go, so that's my three rounds up. What you're going to do is you're actually just going to fasten off this piece. So you're gonna go slip stitch, and then snip with a small tail just left behind, because you will use this later for sewing up the crotch of your little bat. And just pull it tight. And you're just gonna repeat this again, but not fasten off at the end. 
then out. Cool. So you can see there that I've got those three stitches up. Um, and as this is my second leg, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to fasten off. What I'm going to do is one, I'll just get rid of that stitch marker there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to join the legs. So if you grab your first leg, what you want to do is you're just going to start crocheting into the next round. So actually I'm going to put my stitch marker back in there because I don't want to lose the start of where I was. There we are. So now what I want to do is I want to crochet in around this leg. So the way you do that is you actually just insert your hook. So I always insert it just in that first stitch off to the left of those, um, of where you fastened off, or even just like slightly underneath it. And then what you do is you just act as though it is a normal crochet piece. So I'm going to, this is just a little bit of fluff in the way. So I'm just going to single crochet as normal. Now they're attached and I'm just going to crochet around until I have gone around once on the, the first leg. So that's 12 single crochets. So now I'm back where I had just fastened off and I can just quickly count to see if I just did a total of 12 from my stitch marker. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that means I've done the single crochets around that one leg there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find where that last single crochet from the second leg was, or my, the one that I didn't fasten off on. And I'm actually just going to do a single crochet into the stitch that I should have gone into if I was going to be continuing on around that leg. So that is that stitch here. So what I'm going to do, just like before, is put my hook across and then single crochet as normal. So that's one, two. So what you want to do is you just want to quickly count around and make sure that you have a total of 24 stitches on your legs. So that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and then 24. Perfect, so I have my 24 stitches and my legs are now joined. You will see that there's like a little gap here. Um, we will fix that later. So using that tail that you fastened off with earlier from leg one, uh, we're gonna use that to join those together, but that's, I mean, you can do it now, but I just tend to do it when there's more stuffing in there. Um, purely because if you try to sew it together now, it might actually, if, it might actually affect how the stuffing looks at the end. So I prefer to stuff first and then piece them together. But you can just leave that tail dangling between the legs. So for the next round, which I believe is round seven, what we're gonna do is an increase round. So we're gonna do three stitches increase all the way around. And that's going around both legs. So one, two, three, So now for the next round, what you want to do is you're going to do two stitches increase and then continue on around doing four stitches increases uh, until you have two stitches left and then you just do two single crochets. And 
one. And that last stitch, two. Perfect. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do four rounds of single crochet. You should have 36 uh, stitches at this point. So we'll just continue on here and I will meet you at the end. And lucky last. There we go. Cool. So I move my stitch marker back up to that single crochet there. Perfect. Cool. So now for the next round, what we're going to do is we're going to do a two stitch decrease. So one or well two single crochet decrease. One, two, decrease. And then we're going to continue doing a four single crochet decrease for five repetitions. And then end with two single crochets. Lucky last one and two. Now for this next round, we're gonna do a round of three single crochets decrease and we're gonna repeat that six times around. Now for this next round, what we want to do is we're just going to do two single rounds of just a standard single crochet and then we're going to end with a uh, another decrease round before we fasten it off there we are and now we're going to do the last round of the body which is going to start with a single crochet and then straight into an invisible decrease and now we're going to repeat a two single crochets uh, decrease repetition uh, five times around and then we're going to end on a single crochet in that in the stitch the final stitch and then that last single crochet there we go so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip stitch and fasten off and I'm going to leave a long tail for sewing the piece together later. Cool. There you go. So now we have the body, which you should have a long tail piece over here, as well as that little small tail for sewing up its little crotch hole later, as well as the head. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the ears, and then we will finish off on the wings, and then I'll show you how to stuff your piece, as well as sew it all together. So the ear piece has a bit of a different start, it's still a magic circle, but what we're going to do is we're going to start off with only four stitches in our magic circle. So I have one single crochet, and then I'm going to pull it tight around the hook like I said earlier. Uh, this bit can be a little bit fiddly, but it does make for a nice pointed ear, which is what we're trying to achieve here with our little bat ears. That's one, two three, four. Now what we're going to do is we are going to go stitch, increase, stitch, increase around those four stitches that we just made. So we're still working in the round. So it is single crochet. So I mean, it can be a bit fiddly there. And then an increase but I do promise you it looks really nice. <laughs> and stitch again, and then an increase. So you should, in theory, have one, two, three, four, five, six single crochet stitches around. Awesome. So now what I'm going to do for this next round 
is we're actually going to do an increase round like we normally do. So we're going to do an increase into every stitch around and we should end up with 12 stitches. So that's one So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And we do want it to have that little cone shape going there because that's we want that pointed piece for our bat ears. So now what you're going to do is you're going to do uh, just a single round of 12 stitches. Of 12 single crochets, sorry. So that's 1, 11, 12. Now what we're going to do is we're going to increase the width a little bit more and we're going to do a round of three single crochets increase and we're going to repeat that three times. So that's one, two, three, increase. increase perfect I'm just gonna pull on my little magic circle a little bit just to keep it that nice and tight cool now we should have a stitch count of 15 so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do two rounds of single crochets next round what we're going to do is we're actually going to decrease so we're going to go decrease back down to only having 12 stitches so we're going to do three single crochets and then a decrease and we're going to repeat that three times around this part here what we're going to do is we're actually going to flatten the piece so we're going to pinch it across the top like this and we're actually going to crochet across the piece. Oh my god, you can see the mark on my finger because I have very tight stitching. Just ignore that. But anyway, so what you're going to do is you're going to flatten the piece like this. And you can see those stitches going across there. You want to make sure you're going across two every single time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to throw my yarn. So rather than having it over that way, I'm going to throw it underneath my hook. And then I'm going to go into what would have been the next stitch, which is, sorry. So I'm going to go into what would have been the next stitch. And then go to the corresponding, so you can see I'm in the next stitch. I'm going to go to what would be the corresponding stitch across. It can be a little bit fiddly. I'm just going to put my, push my hook across both. And then single crochet as I normally would. So that's going across both and then single crochet as you would and I'm going to repeat that across the piece what I should end up with is six single crochets in a row perfect so you see there, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Awesome. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to now fold the piece again this way. And I'm going to repeat that process, but I'm going to go from this stitch across. And I'm going to do that three times going across. So this part can be quite fiddly, but you can see what I want to do is I want to get my hook into the stitch next to my thumb here, this one. And I want to go back across this one. So what I kind of do is I use the hook part, like the actual hook, and I kind of just get in there and then push back through. Then yarn over, pull through, and then go through two stitches across. Yarn over, through, 
Uh, cool. And now I'm just gonna fasten off, and then leave a small tail, just so I can sew it on later. But that's one of your ears. So now we're just gonna repeat that process again for the second ear, and then we will start on the wing panels. So now I've got the two ears here, so let's get started on the, the wings. So grab your secondary color. I'm using, once again, I am using color 63 by Hobie Yarns. So for the wings, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the outer panel and we are actually going to be working in rounds for the majority of the wings. So what we're gonna do is we're going to make a slip knot Yeah. And then we're going to chain 13. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And now what you're gonna do is you are going to, I mean if you if you can, I, uh, I would suggest going into the back bumps of your chain, but with this kind of chenille yarn, it doesn't really matter too much, it doesn't really show. So what I do is I go into the second chain, so the second chain from my hook, and I'm just going to single crochet across 12 times. So that's one, two... Twelve. So what you should have would be twelve stitches along the top of your. I guess not really a chain, but your row. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Perfect. So what I'm going to do at the end of each row that we do of these wing panels, we're going to chain one and turn. So for this next row, what we're going to do is we're actually just going to go and do is ten stitches. So that's one, two, three, eight, nine, and then ten. So you'll notice that we haven't gone to the end of the row. That is on purpose because what we're doing is we're making that little kind of frill that you'll see at the bottom of the wings. So I'm going to chain one. Turn, and then I'm gonna single crochet 10 back to the start. Cool. I'm gonna single crochet 10, and this time we're only gonna do eight. So you'll notice that each time that we're heading back down to these like staggered edges, we're gonna be losing two stitches at the end of the row. I'm gonna keep doing that until we get to four stitches left. So, as I said, so we just did chain one, turn, and now we're gonna single crochet along for eight. Cool, so I'll chain one, turn, and then continue back for eight. Chain one, turn, now this time, yes you guessed it, we're going to go for six. Six, and chain one, turn, and we'll go six back. Six. Chain one, we'll go back along for four now. As you can see, we're losing those two stitches every time, or those two single crochets. Three, four, chain one, and then come back for four. Two, three, four. And then I'm just going to fasten off. 
And I don't really need a long tail here because I'm not sewing onto anything. And we're going to weave in these tails a little bit later. Um, we're not even going to weave them in, we're just going to tuck them on the inside of the bat wing. So there you go. So as you can see, this is the inner panel for one of my wings. Um, it does have these loose tails here. What we're going to do is when we are putting the outer panel on, we're going to be putting it on the back and we're just going to be crocheting around and it will tuck in those tails so they won't be hidden. So if you've got them, just make sure they're like not too long. Like even this is like a little bit too long. Um, but yeah. What we're going to do is we're just going to repeat this process again and make a second inner wing panel. Um, and then once we've done that and we have two inner wing panels, then we are going to continue on with the outer wing panels. So I'll meet you back here once we have those two panels. So there we are. So now I have my two inner wing panels. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start on the outer wing panels. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat the exact same process again. But when I get to that last final stitch, rather than fastening off, I'm going to actually start crocheting the two panels uh, together. So. I will meet you once you have finished your first outer panel and then we can start crocheting that wing together. And then again, if it wasn't clear enough, you're gonna be using your main body color yarn for the outer panels of the wings. Okay, so now that I have my two wing panels, I have my outer panel and my inner panel, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna crochet the two together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the two panels next to each other like so. Um, I'm actually, sorry, I should do this. I'm going to chain one on my outer panel just because it makes it a bit easier. Although it's not entirely necessary, um, but it just makes it easier for me. Put your panels together and what you're going to do is you're going to go into the edge of your rows. Like so. And you're actually just going to start crocheting around. You know, make sure that with every stitch you're going across and you're going through both panels. So now as you can see I've got the inner panel is on the outside. The next time I am crocheting the two wings together I'm going to have the inner panel on the inside. But as I said it doesn't matter for your first time around. You're just going to crochet around and make sure that the two are together making sure that you crochet across uh, both panels with each stitch. And as you do it, you can see that there is these like tail pieces hanging about. And what you can do is that you can actually tuck them on the inside. Um, but I will just like quickly do this last stitch before them. Like so. And then I'm just going to tuck them inside both of them. Because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be going across those top stitches. I want to make sure that they're both tucked in. There you go. Ta-da. And now I'm going to just start working across the top panel of these. And I can also just give them like another little quick tug just to make sure that they're fully on the inside of the piece. Like so. Oh, sorry, like so. Now, I'll just crochet across the top. So now that we're coming up to the corners here, these can be a little bit fun. So I tend to actually do like a few stitches going around here, just cause I'm going around like such a big corner. It can be very fiddly getting this right. Um, so what I tend to do is I actually just do like three or so going into the same stitch. And I know it makes like an extra increase, um, but I don't mind it. It actually kind of fans the piece out like a little bit and it gives it a very cool effect. There we go. So now I'm back on there and going back down into these crevices. Now with these little crevice pieces, you will find that there is like a one stitch that's just like tucked in here. Um, you can skip it if you want. I think it looks good if you go into it. So I will show you what I mean. So I'm just going into it now and making sure I do a stitch. I normally do a little bit of a tighter one, but what it's going to give you, it will actually give you like a bit of a jagged effect. Um, I can show you once I move along the wing a little bit more.
So as you can see, I've actually got this like weird little purple bit there. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna maneuver that stitch a little bit. It's just kind of how the single crochet tied onto there. It's not too bad, you can just play around. There you go. Like it doesn't have to look that perfect. It's just gonna have to make sure that it has this kind of like, you see how the wings are going up like that and making that motion there. That's essentially all you need to go for. And once again, it doesn't need to look perfect. It looks pretty nice when it's like kind of randomized looking. Um, but that's just my preference. If you want to really go in there and perfect it all, then be my guest. But this is how I do it. you notice on this last row here, you might have these tails kind of like sticking out and getting in the way. So what you can just do is if you just use like your darning needle or even your hook actually, you can just stuff them on the inside. Even your finger. <laughs> just put them on the inside there because we don't want them hanging out of the bat. Awesome. So now we're just going to close up that piece. Like so, going along that last row. stitch four and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna single crochet or well not single crochet I'm just gonna slip stitch into that first connecting piece around and then I'm going to cut it off and leave a tail for sewing the piece to the main body later Let's pull that through there you go you have one of your wing pieces done so now as we've come to the end of the second outer panel, what I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm putting the inner panel, um, I'm laying it the opposite side to how we did the panels before. So before we had the inner panel that was sitting on the outside and I crocheted it together and that's how we, sorry, where am I? And that's how we came out with that result. And so now this time I want to put it on the inside so we can come out with the opposite result to the first wing. see I'm crocheting with the inner panel on the front side this time facing me so I'm just going to keep crocheting across both panels until I get to the end and then we can move on to sewing the pieces together and stuffing them of course awesome so now I have the two wing panels and then I have my body I have my head and I have my two ears. So now I'm ready to actually sew the piece together. So what we're going to do first is we're going to grab our polyfill and we're going to start stuffing into the head. Now I'm going to show you how I stuff. What I do is I actually rip up the fluffiness of the polyfill, make sure it's like a bunch of little pieces. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start padding out the bottom like so. But what I want to start doing is making sure I'm actually getting that round shape around the bottom there. And what I'm really wanting to do is making sure is that I've got a nice even shape going around like this bottom layer here around to the sides. So I don't want to be stuffing into the middle as much. I want to be padding out the outsides of the head. Until it starts rounding out a bit more. And just keep going and keep trying to evenly pad out what you'll see is there actually is like a gap forming like a little hole in the middle there and that's where you want to fill in last keep making sure you're padding out pretty evenly to the outsides you can see if you are by just looking at your piece or from many different angles like you can see here like this kind of side seems a bit sloped out so I might have too much stuffing over here 
or not, or I just still need to keep stuffing around. And you can normally feel around your piece as well for where they might need more stuffing. Um, also, just as a side note, if you do have um, safety eyes like this and you can you know that there might be like a jagged end on the inside make sure that you're like stuffing around on the other side of the safety eye uh, just so otherwise it might end up like tipping up forwards like that if there's like all the stuffing's been pushed against it you want to make sure you're actually going around the little spike that's on the inside just gonna start stuffing into the middle there because what that's going to do is it's going to start pushing that even padding that I've already created and start pushing it to the outsides. Cool. Um, as you know, one of my tips for getting rid of the cone head on the top there, apart from like stretching it out earlier, which seems to have fixed it, what you can also do is you start stuffing in around the jawline down here. So when you are stuffing in, make sure you get this, this section like here. Make sure that that's being well padded because that'll stretch the piece out from the top and stretch it around to that bottom. Now I'm just going to quickly stuff the body and then we can start actually sewing the pieces together. So with the body what you actually want to do is you want to break it up into certain sections that you're stuffing. You want to make sure that you've got enough padding in both of the feet and then you can do the rest of the body. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually just going to test out where I want to place everything. Um, I do this with all my patterns. I want to make sure that I can actually put the pieces together and just see what it looks like as an outcome. Uh, I like to use my bobby pins just to hold the head down onto the piece. Sometimes when you're sewing pieces together you might want to leave things like these bobby pins like attached so it stays on. Um, but most of the time I just use pins so I can kind of see where I want everything to lay out. So the ears, I want them about three stitches back from the eyes. Isn't that cute? And then the two wings on the back, I want that little row of four being the inner for either side. There we are, something like that. See what it looks like from the front. There, yeah, I'm pretty happy with those placements. So what I'm gonna do is, oh, I'm very happy with how it all looks, so I'm just gonna leave those attachments out as they were. And I'm gonna start sewing these pieces together. So as I said before, I left this tail on the back of the head just so I could kind of like get a gauge of where the eyes would be sitting. And that's really helpful for when I'm actually attaching these pieces because then I can use it as a gauge for when I'm lining the head up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to use the tail from the body which is what was intended for the sewing and I'm going to sew it to the head. So if I put this on here, I want it to be facing that way. I always want to make sure that the tails that I'm sewing together are on the back of the body and the head because if I do it the other way around it can make the head look a little bit lopsided. There is a science to that, but I'm not gonna explain it right now. <laughs> and so I can see that these two stitches, it looks like there's about one stitch in between them from where they would line up to be center. So I'm just gonna keep it like that and use that to map out where I start stitching together. So if I start here, what I do is I always go from the inside so I'll find one of those V's from those stitches before, from the row that I want to stitch into, and I go from the inside, oh, is that going to focus, and I go from the inside to the out. So I'll go through, and now I'll just pull that very loosely tight. As I mentioned in my plush yarns tips and tricks video, you want to be very gentle with this kind of yarn, um, as it can start fraying because of all the friction from sewing. So and I'll go on to the next stitch and I'll go from the inside to the out of the piece and I want to keep pulling the yarn in the direction that it will most easily go through. Into the stitch. And 
just gonna keep going in and out from each of those. And once again, I'm always going through the V, but I'm going from, so once again, I'm always going through the Vs and I'm always going from the inside to the out of the piece. It always pays to check as well if your piece is looking correctly towards where you want it to be looking towards as you're sewing it on. Sometimes I've had times where I've made it face that way, which is not what I want, and then I have to start again. So that's why I always have this other piece of backup yarn, just in case. I know other people also tend to sew up some of these uh, chenille army goodemies by using like a cotton yarn of a replica color or even a lookalike color so you don't see the stitches and it's a lot easier and doesn't actually fray. So here's another tip for you if you need it. Now as we are coming up to that closing piece here, I do just want to like quickly stuff out that neck area. So as I said before, I want to make sure everything is going into that jaw space. And then this part can be a bit fiddly, but what you want to do is you just want to like tuck your finger in and just go into that little jaw space. Don't be too afraid of it, um, but also don't stuff too much because what that you can actually accidentally do is elongate this neck piece and then you have this like weirdly like high face. <laughs> Uh, which looks a bit funky, it looks very top heavy, so you want to make sure you're just like very lightly going into this jaw and evenly spacing it out. You're not actually trying to fill up the neck space, you're trying to fill up the jawline is what I'm saying. So you can see that it looks just a little bit more rounder um, and I think I can just do a little bit more, maybe a teensy bit more just down here. I'm pretty happy with that, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue on sewing until the end. Last stitch I believe, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to pass over the top of that first stitch I went into, and then I'm going to go down and I'm going to go out through the belly a few times. Perfect! So now I'll just cut off the excess yarn on that one there. And then I'm also just going to quickly hide in the tail of the headpiece. And just while we're here, I'm also going to sew up the little crotch of the buddy. So I'm just going to go my needle. This part takes like no time at all. Uh, you could do it earlier as I mentioned, but I find it easier just to do now so I don't like morph up the belly anymore. So you can see what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into this piece. You can see there's like a little gap there uh, with a bit of random loose string in there so we'll just ignore that. But I'm just going to go and kind of zigzag around in this gap here. I don't really have a rhyme or reason for which ways I go or what, I just kind of go evenly across. Just to close it up. It can be a little bit fiddly, as evidenced by me. And then just stuff it through. Take it tight, there you go. Nice and sewn together. See, that wasn't so hard, was it? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna go sew on the ears next. So I really like sewing on these ears. They also don't take like a lot of time at all to sew on, but what you do is you grab your ears and you know there's like three stitches along the bottom there so what you want to do on the bottom of the ears is what I mean there's three stitches that you can sew through but what I want you to do is you want to line it up kind of with the legs of the body here 
which is usually about three stitches back from the eye and I have the bottom end of my ear is actually lined up with the top of my eye. So you can see that. So you have one, two, three stitches across and then that's where I'm going to put my ear and that should be in the same like row line as the top of the eye. Cool. And that lines up with the legs. So what I'm going to do is once again I'm going to count one, two, three and I'm just going to go one, two, three and I'm just going to put my yarn through like that. Pull through, get back up through the stitch, get back into the head, across the next stitch, pull across, up through, go across the next stitch, and then pull up in this last stitch. Now, specifically with the ears. What you want to do is you go back into the stitch that you just thought the, the gap you just came out of and what you're going to do is you're going to go up one row. So to pull your yarn through and what we're going to do is we're actually going to go work along this little edge of stitches here. It might seem a bit random. Sorry, the lighting is coming through quite a lot into my room now. So you go up and what we're going to do is we're going to work across these three stitches here and we're going to attach the air to the top of the head. So what I do is I literally go on the outside here and I come back through the stitch. And I pull through and I go back into that gap where I was just coming out of. Pull through and pull tight. Go back through to the next one. Pull through, pull tight and go into the next stitch and so on and so forth. So you're in that last little gap that you'll come out of and what you're going to do is you're actually just going to come up, so that's a bit hard to see, you're going to come up and go into the back of that ear, right there, pull out and then go back into that gap and then you're just going to push your needle through your head a few times just to make sure it's secure inside the head, all that yarn is the yarn tail is at least. And you just snip that off. And voila! You want your ears, it's sticking up. Cute! Now you're just going to repeat the same on the other side. There you go, you have your two ears sticking up. Beautiful. So now we're going to move on to the wings. So if we go on to the back of our piece here, what we're going to do is we're going to place the wings maybe about one row below the neckline. And we're going to angle them so it starts here and it'll probably be about two stitches in between the two wings. And then go down on a little diagonal axis. So once we have both wings on there, and they're going to be placed somewhat like this. So you can put like a pin or two in here just to like map out where you want that center of the back to be. I just kind of eyeball it and it usually works out fine. What we want to do is we're actually going to go sideways through our stitches like this. So there you go, one. And I'm actually going to come back out. Oops, sorry, I've done this a little bit upside down. So you're going to go through, sorry, there we go. So you're going to go through, and we're actually going to go underneath and go through the four stitches that we have on the back here. So, um, and then I'm going to go down a row and slightly across as we go.
So where we just stitched the wing down on that diagonal order, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go back through. I'm going to do a little stitch through like this. I'm going to go back up where we just came. So that's one. And then once into the body. Once into the wing. Once back into the body. Making sure you're following along where you sewed the original edge of the wing. to do is I go back out through that first stitch that we had and I like to actually stitch once into that top stitch up here and then back into the wing body and then back through the body a few times attached onto the wing back like that. Now I can go my other wing and do the opposite on the other side. There we are, we have the main body of the bat done. So brush off any excess Chanel yarn, cause as we know, that just flakes everywhere. But it's looking pretty good, right? So the last thing we need is just its little snout. So now we're just gonna be doing the little snout, mouth, nose part of the, the bat. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna find a few gaps in between the eyes, normally about three or four. So if we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got eight, so I probably wanna do probably across four. So if I point out these four here, so we've gone two in from the eyes. And so what I wanna do is actually wanna come underneath and just pop out on one of those little gaps. And I'm just gonna go over. So one, two, three. Go back into that stitch and back out to where I just came off. Like so, very loosely, you don't want to pull it too tight and then you're just going to go over again and then back out from that original space where you first went in with your yarn. And once again, you don't want to pull it too tight, you just want to leave it nice and snug, give it that little shape there. And then you can just snip off your yarn, tie a little knot, Like so, Ding. snip it off even further and use those scraps for stuffing later on. And then just tuck that inside your piece. There we are. And there you go, you've finished your little bat. Thank you so much for joining me on today's tutorial. I really appreciate you coming along on this journey. If you liked this content, please give this video a like, subscribe, comment below what you thought. If you have any questions, please reach out in my DMs or even in the comments again. This pattern will be available on my website as a PDF, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, I've got it linked below in the description should you need to find it, just make it easier for yourself. And once again, feel free to sell anything that you made using this pattern and also tag me in any photos or videos of your makes. I would love to see them. Once again, thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming on this journey and I hope you have a great day. And a happy Halloween, of course. Woo! Zeddy out. <laughs> Na 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 na